Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, episode of the Butter What Show. I'm Pat Regan. I'm joined here with my co-host, BrianCMoses.com. And we're going to talk to you today. I'm excited about the Opulo.io Lumen PNP. That's a pick and place machine. It's an open source pick and place machine. What's a pick and place machine? And that's, that's what I need to tell you. What's a pick and place machine, Pat? Well, I'm going to tell you what, Tubby. A, <laughs> a pick and place machine. It looks a lot like a, a 3D printer or a CNC machine. And this one has a lot in common with a 3D printer. Except instead of depositing filament, it moves microchips around. You would order, you would design your PCB in something like KiCad or Eagle or probably KiCad, known, known us, and send that off to somebody like PCBWay. They will manufacture a printed circuit board. It's layers of copper and uh, fiberglass. They'll send those boards back to you, and then you can put them on this machine to populate them with all the electronic components. Interesting. Um, but it doesn't actually do the soldering for you, does it? Uh, not quite. You, there's another step you have to do. You don't solder these the way you're used to. You don't use a uh, soldering iron and, uh, yeah, you don't use a soldering iron. You put down a paste that has, I mean, it must be flux, the, you know, the juicy, gooey, oily flux with little tiny beads of solder in it. And there's a way you use a stencil and you smear the... Kind of like butter in a slice of, a slice of butter, buttering a bagel. Butter what? Butter what? Well, you butter your PCB, Tubby. And it's a little more, it's not exactly more complicated than that, but it, yeah, it's a little bit of a delicate process. You have to do it correctly. And that leaves a little bit of solder on all the places where they're supposed to be soldered. It's a little sticky, gooey solder. And then this machine will drop the chips on top of those spots in all the right places and then you put it in an oven okay and that's what flows for us that would be a toaster oven not a mic almost not literally. a microwave oven not a microwave oven no it would uh you know what happens when you put metal in the microwave tub. you've seen it earlier today uh jeremy and i interviewed the creator of this open source cnc machine on uh the create invent podcast and yeah i'll tell you i was I was interested in having one of these last week, and now I'm even more interested after talking to Steven. But Tubby, what on earth would you and I do with a pick-and-place machine? Well, we would make mini Uber Lights boards, Ed. Just like these the one that guy. you're holding up. These are uh, very simple. Don't say they're very simple, Tubby, because see you die and did a good job. But these are simple in that they only have... 21 of the same component on there, right? It's all the same LED, just in different... They're all rotated a little bit, but the bunch of LEDs. And who wants to do this by hand? Not me. Brian and I were talking about this today because we want to order, you know, the, the batch of 20 of these that we ordered, fully assembled and ready to go. The PCBs, it was like... I think it was $15, Tubby, for 20 PCBs. But then it was another $110 or so to buy the LEDs and have them soldered on for us. The price goes, the more you order, the price goes down. Because with the pick and place, the setup is the hard part. And repeating it over and over yep. again is not too bad. But see, you Dying did the math for us. And for us to get these down to a price where somebody, you know, somebody would actually pay for them, maybe, and we would make a small profit, we'd have to order something like, a thousand or fifteen hundred of these little boards. That's a lot. It's a lot. It's a you have to send the price of a cheap used car over to China and hope that everything works and makes it to your house and they all function and and then you have to figure out how to sell a thousand of them. Yep. Yeah, it's an interesting it's an interesting conundrum. The oh, we were talking about this a little earlier today. What what would you what would you do if there's two of us and we ordered two thousand if you had one thousand nine hundred and ninety eight of those in your in your closet because there wasn't any there wasn't interest or for whatever reason yeah, you made a mistake you made a and mistake yeah it could it could even be worse I mean they could be defective, yeah, you asked them to be and all need to be fixed yep. or all need to be. 
You could make small batches. You could continue to iterate. You could, I don't want to say just in time manufacturing, but you could do it. But you could come pretty close. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could. You can come pretty. You could maintain a small inventory, and if and if only ten people bought them, well, that's that's a bummer. But at least it's not a hey, I've got nineteen hundred ninety more of these that I that I can't do anything with. Yeah, almost two thousand remaining assembled. Yep boards finished products instead of we should probably say the kit is now on sale on sale for sale it's not on sale you don't get a discount yes but it's available to to pre i don't want to say pre-order there's a six week lead time right now but you can go and buy one today and in six weeks you'll have a kit it's one thousand one hundred and forty five dollars and you have to 3d print a fairly sizable number of plastic parts he says it's almost a full spool of pla to print you know the legs yep, and the, the legs connectors and, the and things but none of it looks like difficult prints it's not like printing your mk735 case where there's prints that are you know the entire build volume up the whole volume yeah. yeah nothing like that it's lots of medium-sized parts it's not a bad a bad print yeah i, I was doing the math it, i would much rather have a 1200 machine here at the house and you know, a thou a, a reel of a thousand of these two millimeter neopixels is about fifty six dollars. I found them for on AliExpress. Okay. So, like, what if we bought you know ten spools enough PCBs to make ten spools worth of lights and the machine, and we made fifty lights and we have six spools left over? Yeah, right. And I'd rather have six spools left over that I can sell. Or give to somebody or do something else with than have two thousand Uber lights boards that nobody nobody ended up buying. Yeah, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. So uh when are you buying it? That's a good question. I didn't know I was <laughs> until we talked to you is, right now. This is but this is the problem with in inviting salespeople onto the the Create Invent podcast. They're gonna they're well, gonna, God bless it, Tubby. Because this good, is what Jeremy said. Jeremy said this live on did, camera did really? today. That that's a yeah, that's the trouble. We keep inviting everybody with cool projects on, and we have to buy them all. Great. And then you're we're going to run out of money. Great minds think alike. But I'm sure Jeremy and I are both tempted because Jeremy could be making his macro pads with. Yeah. Them. I don't know. I've never asked how much of a premium he pays to have the LEDs soldered on for him. Yep. See you dying wanted to know how fast this machine was. That was our most hard hitting question. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, see you dying. I'm going to pick on you here because I told him how fast it was. It can do. Stephen is pretty sure so far it'll do about 500 components per minute. And that's placed with vision with the, you know, in the correct spot, you know, they're all checked and rechecked and rotated and whatever magic happens. And see you dying was disappointed because he said, some eight thousand dollar machine that he likes can do five thousand components per minute, and I looked it up, and he's right. It says it'll do five thousand, but that's without vision. When it's using vision, its absolute maximum is thirty five hundred parts per minute Still or a lot. per hour. Seven times, but yeah. The recommended speed, the recommended maximum, is a thousand components per hour. Okay, so. The eight thousand dollar machine can go twice as fast as Steven's machine can go so far. He's still tuning it though. They're they're making improvements. But I think that's quite reasonable. Yep. I was excited. Can't remember how long ago. We were at we're gonna say God, was this at the Alan Wickers when you got me into 3D printing? I miss the I Alan miss Wickers. the Alan Wickers too. I can't remember. We were talking about 3D printing and how neat it would be. When you got to the point where machines could manufacture themselves, and Stephen talks about the the control board, the motherboard that that it can it can create its own, you know, once you've got it yep. assembled, you know, you could use it to create another one, and that yep, and they're doing not only that, that's that's uh, they're eating their own dog food was, here. All the kits that are shipped are made on their own. The PCBs are all made on their own. The lighting, yep. For the two cameras and the motherboard are made on the that's awesome on the lumen p and p that is very awesome and the kit there are no feeders yet for the reels to advance it one part at a time like a more high end machine yep. would have, but 
but I've seen Steven's videos. He's working on that. They'll be coming. He didn't say how much they'd cost. I didn't think to ask. I'm not that smart today. But you can see on this uh, video where it's going to come back to it. He has parts laid out, non-moving parts. They're just, they're strips of, see them all over? Yep. Oh, jeez. But, and I'll show a picture of that here. But it'll go find them, and when it gets to the end of the strip and you're out of parts, it'll say, hey, Tubby, PC, load me back PC up. PC load okay. letter. But it's just like the Prusa, when you run out of filament, yep. it says, hey, dummy, you're out of filament. It's the same, and I imagine it'd be the same with the feeder. When you get to the end of the roll, it'll, it'll say, tell you, hey, I didn't find what I'm put more for. Neopixels in here, Pat. But yeah, maybe I'll be ordering this this week, Tubby. What do you think? I can't talk you out of it. I don't know I if you can. I it seems like you know we've been Brian and I have been mulling this over because it's either the in a vacuum if we said we're going to order twenty five hundred dollars worth of Uber Lights micros and that's all we're going to do, just doing that, yeah, that makes sense. Just do just it. Do it. But but why not buy the eleven hundred dollar machine and make the Uber Lights you know fifty at a time yep. or so and see how things go. See how that goes. And if that doesn't go well, do something different or yeah. And it spreads the risk out over more yep. over more time. What do you guys think out there in on YouTube? Do you do you guys think I should order a Lumen Pick and Place from uh, Stephen Hawes here? He's a very nice guy. And do you think we'll be able to figure out how to work it? What do you think, Tubby? That's a good challenge. I he he talked in the video a lot about how how easy it was. I'd I'd be interested to hear what everybody <laughs> thinks that you know. Are Pat and Brian going to be able to do this? Uh, assemble it and then and then do it. What all our the nice thing is it's just another CNC machine or three D printer. Yep. It's all about you know calibrating Z's and you know finding homes and things. It's we have some practice in a lot of don't this. don't eat the solder. You pit. should let us know in the comment if you think we're going to succeed with one of these if we uh, if we decide to pull the trigger tomorrow. 